Uh, let's call this Wickfield Board of Health meeting to order. It's October 20th, 2001 at 7.02 p.m. Uh, present is myself, Candace Linehan, Laurel Lorvel, and welcome back, Elaine Silva. Thank you. And so do we want to start with public participation then, or? I, I would. Okay, so uh, let's open well, it to public participation. I see we have Julie Smith-Galvin here with us today, so why don't you have the floor? I will go first, and then I think Melissa um, Houston is on as well. Um, so thank you. It came to my attention um, that on your agenda tonight is a discussion of the 2015A project. Um, you know, very interestingly named so that nobody ever knows what it is when it's on public agendas. Um, I've been following this project since October of 2020, um, when I discovered two days after it, it closed its DEP public process that it was happening. Um, it has been developed very quietly, um, and Wakefield is one of 14 municipal um, utilities that is purchasing what they call capacity um, from this new natural gas oil backup peaker plant being built in, um, in Peabody. And I understand that the Peabody Board of Health, um, along with some other organizations, including um, physicians for, you know, I, 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 I know, I, I know, yeah, Bright has been speaking on this. Um, and, and it's, it, I'm really encouraged that um, the Peabody Health Department has asked the state to pursue a more fulsome environmental impact assessment and a health assessment. Um, this is a project that was first reviewed 10 years ago. Um, and quite honestly, I've been saying this full time, maybe 10 years ago, it made sense. Right now, it does not make sense from an environmental standpoint, from a health standpoint, from a cost standpoint. If you look at the prices of natural gas are supposed to be higher this year, than they have been since 2007, which just means that this plant will operate on oil, which is even more devastating for Essex County, um, which already has high rates of lung disease. So my, I would just encourage the Board of Health to um, support the Peabody um, Board of Health in their request. We are, as I said, we're one of 14 communities buying from this project. Um, we're buying 8% of the total. As a peaker plant, I know energy is very confusing, but this is a peaker plant, which means it won't run all the time. And they're right that this won't run all the time. And that's what a lot of the advocates will tell you. Um, the disturbing thing is that this will run on the hottest days of the year and the coldest days of the year. And of course the hottest days of the year are already the days of the year that are um, very, very poor air quality. This project is placed right next to two old natural gas peaker projects. So it will run at the exact same time as the two old ones, further exacerbating health issues in the region. So um, I would just really encourage Wakefield, if we, if we are capable of buying the power from this project, I think that we should support understanding that it is, you know, what it's, what's environmental impacts are, what its health impacts are, um, and what its impacts on social justice. There's, this is located within like five environmental justice communities. Mm -hmm. um, and it's completely inconsistent with any state law right now, but it is just, it's been grandfathered, you know, for about the last decade and is about to be built. But I really hope that we can pause and understand its health impacts. And I would encourage you to do that. Stop there. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Uh, Chair, can I just ask a Thank quick you. question? Please. Um, Julie, can you, um, this is the first I've heard of environmental justice neighborhoods. What's the criteria for that? The state has a number of criteria. Um, they're divided. Some are economic, some are um, English speaking, so um, and, and some are race based. Um, but if you look on a map of Peabody, this, I think at the time that I started looking into this, it was within half a mile of two environmental justice areas. The state since updated its map and it's pretty much right in the middle of. I think disabilities justice. count too towards uh, folks with disabilities living in that yeah. particular area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Peabody started an organization called Breathe Clean um, North Shore, and they're really trying to alert people in the area as to what is happening. But this is being built, as I said, next to two existing power plants on land owned by the, the town of Peabody, by the city of Peabody, um, and it's going to be managed by the Peabody Power and Light, which is buying like 30 
percent, 30% of it. Um, but it was, it was done with very, I mean, as I said, just because it was called 2015A, and even Melissa, when I called her today, she's like, I don't see that name, I'm like, remember, it's called 2015A. This has really not gotten very much scrutiny. We, they did put a pause on it in May. They slowed down. They held some public forums. They got lots of input on environmental and health and environment and social justice issues. Um, but then the Department of Public Utilities approved financing for it in October. And so this is just one way I really think that we should just slow down and understand what its impacts are. There's no, there's really no rush. And as I said, with the gas prices going way, way up, I'm really fearful that now when this runs, it's going to run on oil in the foreseeable future. Mm-hmm. So Julie, are you hoping that we um, would be able to write a letter in favor of the health impact study? Is that kind of? Yes. Like a, okay. Okay. Yes. And that beyond be that, any other things that we could do besides um, just be vocal generally about this? And I think just be vocal. I think um, there's still a possibility that the light department commissioners will be taking a vote on this as to whether Wakefield should stay in this project. Um, the, the concern, and I have it as an elected official too with fiduciary um, responsibility, is that there's been a lot of money already sunk into this project and pulling Ooh. out of it would cost a lot of money. And I'm very Ooh. sensitive to that. Um, I've actually been part of a, a group trying to um, get through the Freedom of Information Act exactly kind of what mm-hmm. is in the contract so that we can understand what those full costs are. But um, that hasn't happened. Mm-hmm. So there is a possible, I mean, there is a way to raise our voice with the light commissioners to really try to really truly understand the cost of staying into this, not just from a financial standpoint, but from a again, environmental health and, and justice standpoint. So if we were to draft a response, um, perhaps to have a copy sent to the light commissioner and to the um, mm-hmm. the people that are building this plant? Yeah, so it would be probably to our Wakefield Municipal Gas and Light commissioners. And um, this plant is being built through a contract with MWEC, which is the Massachusetts Municipal Wholesale Electric Company. Okay, that sounds good. Um, and I'm going to let Melissa speak too, because she has a lot of knowledge on this as well. All right, and maybe Melissa, you can yeah. answer this too. Any experience with this advocacy group, the Greater Boston Physicians Group? They reached out to me twice, um, and I think possibly you as well, Elaine. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, my name is Melissa Yusin, um, and I'm on the uh, Wakefield Environmental Sustainability Committee with Julie. Um, and oh, I've also been involved with the Breathe Clean North Shore group who are advocating uh, for the environmental and health study to be done for this plant. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know that the that physician group has been working with with the that advocacy group um, in order to to push for this health study to be done. So I think the the Peabody. So I think the Peabody Health Department is trying to get other health departments um, at the towns that have signed on to get uh, energy from this plant to to advocate at the state level to do this health study. So so that's what um, I came on this call to to support um, Wakefield being a part of that. Okay. But this physicians group is more like aligned that they're like a an advocate for um, the group who is pushing for the health study. They're not necessarily the ones pushing for it themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're just in support um, as okay. you know, a medical community. Sure, okay. Well, we were really encouraged when the Peabody Board of Health themselves learned of this and almost immediately launched mm-hmm. this request for um, a health study. Yeah. Okay. I think the I think the advocacy group is just really supporting what the Peabody Board of Health has asked. Okay. Julie and Melissa, thank you both for coming on. It was really helpful to have a little bit more explanation uh, about this. Um, I was rereading the emails earlier, and I'm glad we're talking about it because it's sort of the first I've heard about it too. So I'm glad to have some people who are able to really say yes, thank you. <laughs> you guys yes. should be, you know, we support this. <laughs> Did, did Anthony forward to you something I sent to him yesterday, which is a, a testimony from Jen Calais, 
who was who is one of the Wakefield Municipal Gas and Light um, District Commissioners, but she was not speaking on that regard. But um, I can have Anthony forward it to you additionally. And essentially, she she said the same, even as a you know being an energy person. Um, she she doesn't think the project is um, timely and that it's sort of past its, you know, with, with all the alternative energy options that we're beginning to see that she, she kind of, you know, she, she did not endorse the project. So she, I reached out to her um, just yesterday because, mm -hmm. you know, we can discuss this um, when Anthony gets back, but you know, yeah, there's Anthony. <laughs> we're, a little, we're a little bit out of, a little bit out of order here. I, I I just will say too that um like I said I've been following this since October and there was no information in one place. So my website, which is julieforwakefield.com, backslash um you just go to, if you just go to initiatives backslash Peabody, I have outlined everything that I know about the project. Oh nice. And that has been used by a lot of people to to um yeah, you know, it's it's probably not completely up to date, but it's pretty up to date. If you just want to see what other communities are involved in all of that. That would be great. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'm going to jump off because I have to go to the housing forum, but thank you so much for everything you're doing <laughs> on all fronts. Hi, Anthony. Nice to see you. Um, and um, welcome back, Elaine. Thank you, Julie. Bye. Thank you as well. I'm going to drop. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks, Melissa. Oh, well, there's Anthony. Good. I was on the wrong thing. Anthony, you're on mute. Oh, no, you're not. Hi. Hi. Great. Welcome back, Aline. Thank you, Anthony. Nice to be back. <laughs> nice to see you again. I miss you. <laughs> it was usually in a while now. Cindy, yeah. how are you <laughs> Everything's good. Good. Okay. Um, so do should we kind of maybe reverse our order a little bit and get more into the 2015 discussion since we already kind of started or we could pause and talk about the ice cream trucks um i think maybe the ice cream trucks is a little bit easier unless unless uh laurel you want to you want to do 2015 a first no it, if it, ice cream trucks is quick let's let's discuss that and do you want to do do you want to do minutes as well do you want to do minutes first from september 22nd I think that could also be quick. Yep, I read those earlier today and I thought they looked good. Uh, did you have anything to add, Laura? I did. I, I would just change the wording a little bit. Um, just to, I've just been editing all summer. Um, so Anthony, thanks to Board of Health and staff having just been, B-E-E-N, in the position for two weeks as a new health director, period. He has had a seamless transition and is looking forward to getting um, started. I would just get rid of to help. Um, and then it seems like the discussion of the new board of health member is a little, could use a little editing. And so my suggestion would be per Tom Mellon, the town council will set a date to appoint BOH vacancy Silva will submit a letter to the Board of Health Town Council and Tom Mel Mullen to finish the term in April. Um, the Town Council will put out a statement of vacancy to the public, period. Does that make more sense? Yep. I think it reads a little bit better. And then everything else looked fine to me. Okay, so with those edits, do you wanna make a motion? Yep. I would make a motion to accept the minutes for September 22nd, 2021 as noted. I'll second. All in favor? Aye, Gorville. One hand, aye. Elaine right. doesn't get to do it because she, she, she wasn't <laughs> part of the meeting, even though you were I there. was there, but I, I, don't have to, I don't have to approve it. I know, I know. So you were just a guest. <laughs> What the heck's going on with ice cream trucks? This is like so exciting to have something other than COVID to talk about. Yeah, let's talk about ice cream trucks. 
Okay, so um, as far as I understand, I've, I've spoken with Coral about this a few times. Um, there's two ice cream trucks in question here, is that correct? Okay, so it sounds like um, one of them, one of the owners has had a history of um, hanging out outside of schools. Um, it sounds like his conduct just in general has been um, disruptful, I think, to the, the, the um, residents of Wakefield. Um, and I think, I'm not sure about the inspection piece of it. So I think Coral has done inspections for both, uh, both ice cream trucks. Um, they, they have generally a few things to correct each time. Uh, so, and I believe the two, the two that we're talking about have had encounters in other towns as well in terms of altercations. Um, so, for our, for our um, discussion here today, I was wondering, you know, what I guess what the value of having these two ice cream trucks is here um, that we have to deal with both their kind of back and forth um, kind of hostile relationship as well as one of uh, one of the ice cream truck owners being um, disruptful, I think. Don't we only give them a um, temporary permit, the ice cream trucks usually to run for like June to September or something. Isn't it like a seasonal type of thing that we usually do with them? I believe it is a seasonal permit. Okay. Um, and don't we run two. quarries? Uh, we don't run any quarries or sorries on them as part of that application process? That I'm actually not sure of. Um, I think, yes. I think that does. We do. We do. Well, okay. so from the town that they live in, they have to go to that town and, and go get fingerprinted by the police. Yeah, okay. okay. So once we see that they, they've done that, then, so they basically are running the um, quarry and story on them. But we've never had any bad, never had any reports or anything or any anything to indicate that there was anything with them? Nope. Anywhere well, else? they wouldn't got they wouldn't get their permit their from permit. the police. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then they wouldn't be it wouldn't be valid to me if it was if they didn't get it. If mm -hmm. They get a valid permit from the, the police that they they station that they live in, and then submit that with their packet. Mm -hmm. have, they, have they had any altercations with Wakefield PD? Is that Not that I know of. Um, I, I think believe that I, they're. Was there was there one, Cindy? Yeah, was. I think I um, there's a police report. I think they filed police reports on each other in Wakefield. Right, right, yes, okay. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so they've, they've, had this, they've had the same thing, and I think it was, I think it was Malden. Um, they had the same issue, the two of the, the, the two same um, ice cream trucks. Is it like a turf kind of yes. disagreement? <laughs> it's, it's, okay. something like, it's something like that, yeah. Shouldn't they just be out of town by now anyway? It's October. Yeah. Well, uh, well, we can still hear them. I don't think their permit runs out until probably end of October, I assume. Or now, the way it days. used to the way it used to be was that it would expire in November. November. But then, but now it's an annual, so yeah, it expires. Okay. It expires in June. So, okay. but uh, I I forget why that ended up changing, but that did end up changing. It may have been part of the food code rules. We, we had nothing to do yeah. with it. We certainly did. It did not come yeah. to the board's attention. Yeah. No. This isn't like a discussion for now, but maybe in the future we could rethink about how long those are even allowed to be. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I, I think, think I, go ahead. I, I think having it expire November 1st was the way to go. Right. But I forget if something was going on that there was so many pop-up events and they uh -huh. were applying. And then we, mm -hmm. we said we would, you know, extend the, just like the, um, seasonal market food, um, yeah. farmers market permits they go mm -hmm. all year now okay. because they do the indoor pop-up markets yeah. mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um but so technically it, the two ice cream trucks we're talking about their permit would expire june 30th okay. 2020 22 True. is there anything in their permit um i can't remember cindy i'm very sorry but as to where they're able to park the trucks if they can't park them like in a public area like they can't pull into the middle of main street like in a parking spot uptown can they and do that isn't there something about that there is there is something that restricts them from parking in school parking lots um okay. and they and one of them has done that and so i think that was noted i think that was noted by the police at some point um okay. 
-hmm. So there is there is a restriction there. But, and that was I mean, what, what would be the criteria for considering revoking a permit? I mean, if if that kind of stuff has happened. Right. I mean, we could look at we could look at it in terms of public nuisance. Um, you know, if if they're parking in a school, would be endangerment. You know, endangerment welfare of children. Um, we'd have to. I'd have to consult with Coral on this one because she has the full file. Um, but I, I believe, you know, I believe that they this particular there's one of them that's in particular that has been uh, noted several times by the police as you know violating their permit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How long have they been with us? Have they been with us for a few years, Cindy? This one, this one, um, one person has been around for a couple years. Okay. Um, and I think the reason we get no one else is because he scares the other ones off. And um, we did get a new a new permit. Um, someone just recently applied, and those are the two that are fighting now. So we only uh, have two, but um, the new the new one had issues. You know, I don't know. There were issues with the new guy and not not even having anything to do with even a fight, but some other issues in a school parking lot with there was some type of Facebook thing happening. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. You should only allow one in the town. Well, that would be um, kind of restricting a permit. And, yeah, you know I'm what I mean? Sure. It's, it's, yeah. It has to be personality and over who's going to get it. I don't think that, to personally, to be honest with you, I don't know how popular ice cream trucks are anymore. Um, I know we used to have one that used to come up here years ago on our street when the kids were small. And the only other time I've ever seen one is uptown at like an event, you know, or on a weekend. And even then you don't see them that much. Yeah, and then there, was, yeah. there was another report of um, one of them attending kind of like an outdoor event. I think Cindy, you may have heard this and they actually plowed through one of the barricades trying to leave. Ooh. They weren't actually allowed to be there. So they were told to leave and they just pulled through one of the barricades. Yes. So, I, you know, it's it seems to be more trouble than it's worth. So really um, what we have to do is figure out, you know, a legitimate reason for them to leave other than just being a public nuisance. But so yeah. can they we would show up to my kids' uh, t-ball games. And it was completely a nuisance because they would show up before the game was over and then the kids would stop paying attention because mm -hmm. all they would hear is the music. And then it was like a circus, you know, of course, I'm sure they were making money and that's, that's why they're doing this, but they would show up at like every t-ball practice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. And it's so also like, are we promoting healthy eating? Are we promoting like <laughs> nutrition in town <laughs> at all? <laughs> all right. So I just want to I just want to get us back into the bounds of what we can do. So right. you know we do we do permit food trucks, mm -hmm. um, and I imagine an ice cream truck comes under that. So I I would just like to kind of respond from the my thought is we respond from the board in regards to what is the expectation of both all the checkpoints that have to be done for a food truck and behavior. And I think it would be helpful for us to see the, um, see what our current code is mm -hmm. so that, you know, we, we know what we're doing. And then if we make a motion to revoke those, those permits, then they get a hearing with us. So, I just, I just want to, I'm just trying to, as a, aside from the annoyance, I'm just trying to get in and, you know, I'm just trying to stay within the, the what you're saying is we have to build a case. What we can do. Yeah. 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 So we have to build is a there the code. like a fine structure or anything in place for not adhering to the, the permit? I, I don't know. I, I think that we have regs, ice cream truck regs, actually. I mean, I, we haven't had this issue. So yeah. I, guess, yeah. I guess I guess I guess we'd have to Coral can take a look at what um what they are and um I think go we'll go from there. Like you said, um revisit the codes, you know, that or fine structure if there is one. Um and then maybe um ask them I, we have to investigate the the 
yeah. police so report and see how right. extreme it is. I, I don't know. You can't just say, boom, you're gone. I think, yeah. that, I think you that, that's the yeah. best to get the copy of this police report and see what's been going on between the two of them. And then let's take a look at the rigs at the next meeting and discuss it and see what's yeah. really at the bottom of it. I, I mean, it is the end of the season. It might not be a bad idea that we could say, you know, end of the season, let's revisit this in yeah. the, you know, mm -hmm. your permit, new permit in the spring. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. And it one used of to things... expire November 1st. I guess if it was expiring November 1st, we wouldn't even, we'd be like, okay, then we can talk about yeah. it, what we want to mm -hmm. do um, before they are ready to renew it in the spring, but that's not how it goes. Yeah. And one of the one of the things that change is you know something to consider is I'll, I'll pull them up with Coral at some point and read through them. But the regulations for ice cream trucks are a little bit different than just normal food trucks because they are just giving out prepackaged um, yep. mm -hmm. foods that are so it's a little different yeah. than a, a hot food preparation. But so it's it, there's a little bit of different regulations there. But um, I think um, yeah, and I think that's something we have to consider when we're making a case. Yeah, and and another thing is I mean Coral will be back and. If we, we may have just changed the date of the permit, it could be in the regs that it does expire November 1st. So if, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Really? Do you know, like we'll have to, we'll have to look, but at least it's a start of a discussion about Anthony, it. Anthony, how did this get brought to your attention? Like, how did this start? Did somebody make a complaint? No, this was actually Coral bringing this to my attention. So um, she she had been following along for a while now. Um, I guess she had had conversations with these ice cream truck drivers um, in general, just telling them to you know knock off the behavior they've been doing, and you know the inspection itself. I don't think warranted them to be um, for their permit to be pulled. I think in general their their trucks have been you know satisfactory, but uh, for what I've heard, at least anecdotally. Uh, um, Coral has said that they didn't look that great in there, but just in general, they are meeting the basic requirements, but they are just, you know, creating a nuisance. So she, I think the last police report kind of tipped Coral off a little bit in terms of that they're kind of starting to cross the line more here. So um, that's brought to my attention, so. Yeah, so, you know, I'm, I almost, so I feel like I need more information. So I, I need to review the reg. Maybe we need to rewrite the reg. And the other piece is, is it up to the Board of Health to pull a permit based on behavior if we don't have behavior in the original reg and maybe we need to put it in? Or is this, or or you know, or, or does this rise to a criminal complaint, which would be police department? So I, I just feel like we just have to be careful <laughs> about you know what what our you know what our reg states and where they are. And it may be that it would be helpful um, to invite them to the next meeting uh, to discuss yeah. you know, our understanding of the regs and that we are concerned and they are at, at um, that their permit is in peril. But I can't know that until uh, I have more information. That makes sense. Okay. All right. So, where are we at here? The project 2015A. Do we want? Do we want to go there, Anthony? Do you want to do your health director's report? Um, either one's fine. Maybe um, health director's report isn't going to be too long, so I can just kind of go over that a little bit, and then we can wrap up with 2015A. Um, so. As part of the report, we've run a few successful clinics. Um, thank you to Cindy as well as um, all of our other staff that's been participating. Uh, Laurel, as well, um, Elaine. Elaine. Um, yeah, I know <laughs> Elaine's been doing a lot of them. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for helping out with these. Um, we're starting to uh, really get a good sense of the need for the flu shots out there, and you know, I think it's I think it's great that we're able to you know reach all these people that you know. And like Laurel has said before, I think we have a, you know, we have a duty to the people here to kind of have our presence um, in the community, even if it's giving flu shots. Um, it may not be everybody, but I think it's an important, important thing we're doing. Um, I think in terms of supplies, it's giving us a better sense of how much we're going through. So an update in terms of supplies, one of the things we ran very, uh, very low on was actually needles. 
and that's you know a needle the needle shortage was a you know it's a national thing it's not just here but um, for us we were very lucky to have that connection with um, our emergency uh, management director in Melrose um, his name is Alan Alan Alpert um, he was able to get contact Cattell though and we were able to get um, basically a temporary loan of needles and that's uh, I believe there were six I think we borrowed 600 needles uh, they were the one inch needles uh, in 23 23 gauge or 25 gauge yep and then so we were able to borrow those for the time being and we can replace them as we're able to order them. Um, this will be through other suppliers, but um, I think we were able to just secure that so we don't have to worry about, you know, our clinics running low. Uh, we do have the one and a half inch needles that we've, dis we've discussed before. Those generally are uh, a little more daunting to look at and to administer uh, for the normal person. So um, we are trying to avoid those, um, but- All right, it's I, time for yeah. a lecture, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, go, go ahead. Uh, I'll, I'll let you jump in first. Jump in first. <laughs> no. <laughs> so needles or needles and syringes? Yes. They attach to syringes, all these one the needles that from Cadalda, or are they just needles? No. They're, they're just they're needles. Just, they're just oh, they needles. Were from, okay. Oh, good. All right. Mm -hmm. So kind of as a segue to this, and I think we're beginning, you know, I've, I've spoken to Melissa on this. Anthony, your challenge, should you take it? But my wish for years is that we have an actual inventory. Yes, yes. And, and so God bless Cindy found um, a stash. Uh, you know, so what's interesting is what we have gotten in the past is um, syringes that are hard, uh, hard. You can't switch the needle from the syringe. So we're really, mm -hmm. kind of, you know, and, and I mean, the, the, the COVID-19, you know, clinics, we were like MacGyvering everything that we could, but <laughs> But uh, um, I think we kind of need to settle down and say, okay, you know, we're, we're going to have rolling need for vaccination yeah. and, and we just have to, you know, we just need a better system. And I don't know if we can pull someone per diem to do that. I, you know, I, I hear that funds are coming um, in, in some regards to the town, but um, so, I, you know, I've, I've, I've voiced um, my suggestions to Melissa. So you know, we can leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we'll, we'll, I have yeah. also, Anthony knows I'm a big fan of a certain brand of um, needles <laughs> glide top because you can always use the syringe. Yeah. And the problem yes. being is those have been in shortage since last year. Yeah. And we used yeah. to order them. And I know somebody who ordered like 300 and got like a box of 50. And yeah. I think that's that's something that you have to remember is because even with the COVID, the supplies that they send you, like with H1N1, that you just got to throw them out. You don't need an inch and a half, two inch needles. We don't have animals or anything. I mean, come on. And I think that that's what we have to learn to do is to order the separate syringes with the needle tops, because those needle tops you need for your high dose. And that's what happens. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's a different way of ordering and it's a different new trend. And it depends on how you did before. I mean, as Laura will tell you, I don't like the, what do you call them? I, uh, I, um, the I, I, love, yeah, I love the vantage plant. They're awesome. I, know, <laughs> I, see, I, I just don't like the way they click in sometimes, but everybody's used to their own. I like my own needle top that I can put on with a glide. That's a safety, you know what I mean? And then I can use everywhere. I can use that syringe everywhere. So I think Sounds we just familiar, have to write it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. And I tell you the first day you were there, if you don't give me my needle tops. <laughs> And, you know, um, I think it's important for us to, you know, work on this ordering thing throughout the year, not just, you know, obviously not during this season. Um, we're, we're hoping so, you know, I'm really glad Cindy was able to find all the supplies um, by the herd. Um, we also have a few things kind of stashed here and there in Melrose. And so we just haven't had the time to sit down and really create this inventory. But, you know, the, ideally, we would love to have some sort of electronic, you know, up, easily updatable inventory where we can keep track of everything that we already have, what we need. And the best thing is actually if we have some sort of historical record and we could just kind of project what it looks like in different years. Uh, obviously, we, if we have to go back a little bit before the pandemic and then now looking at pandemic um, times and see, you know, how the usage has changed depending on the clinic, depending on how many we have per year, mm -hmm. then we can really start to make those predictions later on. And, you know, help, it, it helps with ordering uh, in terms of how much we need. So um, 
I'm, I'm definitely hearing you on that, Laurel. Um, I think we we need a very strong inventory. Also, we're just going to be digging up things here and there and being surprised. But, yeah. I mean, we're coming off a wild year. I mean, it was just, you know, not even the past 12 months. And, then, and we just kept getting, you know, crazy ship, you know, not crazy shipments, but I mean, thankfully, the the companies that that manage the shipping for COVID vaccines, mm -hmm. um, they were tight actually, and we were and and I think we we hit several clinics on clinic afternoons, going, oh my God, we're gonna, you know we're gonna run out of the ones or whatever. So so you know somehow we have some left now. Um, so yeah, the more the more we can know. And then Cindy, you've been chasing down. I'm taking over your health director's report, but this whole proof of vaccination thing yeah. turns out the color is disappointing us. So we just have to be ready. Do we have a plan for tomorrow for people to hand them a proof of vaccination? Well, that that's Cataldo. But what they did with at the end of the festival by the Lake Clinic is send me the roster. Yeah. So I've already gotten a couple of calls of people that went, you know, got vaccinated there. And since I have the roster and the information, just like I could get, um, I can email them the lot number and say you were vaccinated. I email it from the Board of Health and they're thankful about that. So it's awesome. same as writing it on anything, like a card. I mean, I have to say, it's nice to have it in an email. Um, yeah. Because- That's why I did like it, four today. But that's more work for you. So I feel badly about that, but it's just, you know- I'm we're still like, doing yeah. COVID cards. Uh, I know I that. and that's the other piece is that yeah I think along with inventory we need a, a proof of vaccination system that's that is self yeah I don't know I mean again well, there are articles about um these patient databases being breached yeah and um we may need to go old school, but yeah, I, I know people are calling the health department going, I can't find my card. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I have a bunch of blank cards. I mean, I could, e I could even do it that way. Just write down the lot numbers. Um, I mean, CVS writes them down. I don't know. Um, send yeah. it in an email seems to be fine, but I, I think that they're gonna, they'll probably work something out fairly soon since they're getting, I don't know if you saw the emails that the people, there's other, there's a lot of, been a lot of talk about why, I mean, you can do it for COVID simple email. It's probably yeah. just a setting issue thing. I don't know. You get the email right after you're vaccinated with COVID. Why can't you do it for flu? Right. I, I don't know. I think I have a feeling that color was more geared towards COVID and not flu. I, I, that's, that's how well, I feel. And then that's where the pressure comes from health directors saying, you know, this, you know, when you get into whatever um, meetings you get into with other health directors, like there has to be a way to push back on these systems. And that's what creates the pressure. So rather, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking of a system. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, um, I, I, I feel more comfortable with it now. Yeah. So. so actually, that actually it did come up. So we had the shared services grant, the public health excellence um, with mm -hmm. the other six communities and that um, even though we weren't really talking about um, necessarily co uh, flu clinics and color system, it came up because we, we were all kind of frustrated with, you know, some of the kind of quirks, I guess, of the system. And we were hoping for a little bit more um, because of what they were showed they were capable of during COVID. And so um I think that there is kind of a shared, um, you know, shared pressure on color and other communities are also calling as well, like, like Cindy said. So uh, it just really will we'll probably come together at some point and kind of put together a more formal kind of director's push uh, behind this. But um, yeah, I mean, yeah. you got to, you know, you got to use leverage when you can. And, you know, just these are all startups, right? You know, yeah. these are all startup companies. You got to find the wizard in there who can make it happen. Yeah. Um, and so in the meanwhile, old school will go. Yeah. Just on letterhead and just give them, well, we'll write on letterhead and then just give them some sort of proof of vaccination. And then maybe it means we keep some sort of, um, digital copy here. We'll, we'll, we'll keep it here. Just on a letterhead that says, you know, that he got vaccinated with a lot number and we keep it somewhere uh, on a file so they can request those records if they need it. Yeah. 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 I, I have it. Yeah. One more thing for Cindy. I just, I hate 
giving you one more things, but hopefully we can make a system. Yeah. Oh, one more thing. I thought you were going to give me one more thing. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm like, what's she? What I was waiting for that one more thing, too. Give you one more thing. I'm You're like, wait, welcome. what is You're welcome. Job security. Uh, moving on. Yep. So um, I guess the other things on our list were um, part of the shared services grant as well. So we've moved ahead in some of the other projects. So um, we're talking about, you know, as a whole, what does a shared services grant mean when all of not all of our communities have the same needs, right? And so, you know, we currently share, we, so we currently have inspectors, obviously Coral and Ivan working in both towns, um, but Melrose and Wakefield generally aren't um, in as much need for inspectors as other places. There's some other places that don't have inspectors in a full time. And so right now we have one person kind of running around to all six towns, um, you know, one day, one, one town, one day, each, of, um, each day of the week. And so they're doing kind of all the things. And it's, it's difficult because um, she's done, a, uh, Abby, she's done a really great job keeping up with all the towns, different regulations, different, you know, different little um, pieces for each town, what their, what their protocol is. But, um, you know, we are trying to figure out the best way to address the needs of each town rather than having her go around to each town because we don't necessarily need her here um, all the time. We already have those needs met. So hopefully if, you know, the idea is for maybe for her to focus on the towns that need her the most, and then we can find other service areas like emergency preparedness or, you know, strategic planning, those kinds of things that could work for our towns. And so, you know, that's not necessarily the way the state had kind of approved this grant in the first place. But, you know, as times evolve, we can really, we can really look at the needs of each town and, and kind of show that. So this is just a brief update in that. So she is going to continue to do work for each town. When she comes to Wakefield, um, generally that is kind of her catch up day. So we're allowing her to kind of just, you know, catch up on any kind of paperwork or follow up. If there was a need, a critical violation or something in some other town, she can follow up within a good time, within the time frame. Um, but we are trying to figure out the best method. So uh, stay tuned for more updates, I guess, on that, on that grant. And then as part of that grant, actually, we have more news on the, uh, the rodent issue. So, you know, in Wakefield, the rodent issue hasn't been as prominent as it has been in Melrose, um, at least, you know, as, as it's being spoken of. Um, as we like to say, the rat issue is a regional issue. It's not necessarily a Melrose issue or even a Wakefield issue. But one of the things we've decided as a, you know, as a consortium here is um, that we will have uniform messaging um, throughout the six communities where hoping to address, you know, some of the very basics in terms of information for homeowners, as well as business owners, restaurants, multi-unit family homes, owners. Um, so we really just want some sort of um, uniformity in that respect, right? So um, we're, the approach we're taking right now is we're developing, you know, a huge set of multimedia tools. So that's, you know, some are print materials, some are social media based, some are video based, um, Meet, uh, projects that will basically help convey um, upkeep um, and anything that you can do to promote uh, or um, deter rodents from living <laughs> on property. <laughs> yeah, those are very important words to mix up. Um, so one of the things that we wanted to discuss was um, obviously the most relevant is going to be uh, Halloween. So we're going to have uh, pumpkins out and about. That's going to be a huge food source um, for rodents. And so we've had some targeted kind of material created for that in our um, our communications, part-time communications officer, Hayes, has been doing a great job and Melanie has overseen them um, creating these materials. So we will be rolling those out very soon. They'll be going out, in, you know, the tax bill, you know, and other kind of mailings from the town and city. So these will go out to the six communities once it's approved. Oh, cool. Yep. Um, let me see, was there anything else? The youth action. So Catherine has been helping us in the process, and this is um, this has some ties to Melrose as well. But so in Melrose, we're trying to hire a public health specialist, and this was changed from the substance use coordinator. But Catherine, Ding but Catherine Dingra has actually been very uh, instrumental in helping us with that. And so the idea is to have the public health specialist um, who will have a focus on substance use. But we're, we expanded it slightly so they could work on other projects as well, you know, other kind of risk behaviors that maybe, you know, that maybe uh, the grant opportunities may allow for. Um, but they will be working closely with our, um, with our department here, and obviously Catherine and Youth Action Team. So 
Um, I think that position, once once we're able to fill it, which we're kind of in the process right now, they'll be a great addition to this team in both towns. So. And I believe, I believe that's it. That's all the updates I have. It's interesting. Um, so Catherine is still under our CADCA grant. And so um, she was given, I mean, everybody who was in grant was, was able to pivot and, and help, you know, kind of all in with the COVID effort. Um, and we've talked about and wake up, um, you know, making sure that we're sustainable when, when our grant cycle runs out and we still have some time. And so it's interesting to think about how that um, model in Melrose will look because Melrose no longer has that grant. So I'm assuming that the city has, you know, found a way to fund it. And it sounds like you're being a little bit more out of, you know, it, it's nice because you can be a little bit more creative and a little out of the box because if you're you know under the grant you're really in the confines of the yes. grant um yeah so. and i think that's i think that's part of it and uh, i'm glad you brought that up actually so um very luckily we were able to bring this into the city budget the public health specialist position and that really allows us you know great flexibility and having them help to create you know write grant write for grants um, that are relevant to you know what we want to achieve and that allows us to possibly even bring in, bring in more, you know, uh, more positions, even if it's on a grant basis, um, that allows us really to expand our process. And that's something we have to consider, I think, in Wakefield as well, because Catherine is under the CADCA grant. Um, we, do, we do hope to find a way to bring, uh, bring her into the town budget. Um, I think that'll be, that'll be one step towards creating a more sustainable kind of program is to have that person that's been creating all these programs that are now self-sustaining um, right. to be around, you know, without having to worry about grants and, you know, those deliverables. So um, I think it's a model and that we will try to follow in Wakefield is to create some more stability for our kind of um, idea generators, such as Catherine. Um, and then once we can do that, then we can, you know, really work as, you know, a two, a two city and town kind of system and really start to apply for grants. And, you know, so I think, I think that'll be a good, a good place to go. I like the idea generator. I was calling her Catherine the Catalyst the other day. Yeah. She just, she just has this way of, of getting things done. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. And she's actually, um, she's actually on our search committee as well. And so um, she'll be very integral in, you know, the uh, screening process and the hiring process. I think uh, it's great to have her experience and her, you know, seeing through things in that lens, so. Cool. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other Where comments about the health director's report? Anything else? I just, I just have a, uh, a live update from Ann Santos who just texted me, whoops. I just lost it. Um, she had hoped to come to the meeting. So I didn't realize it, but um, the town councilors last summer in their strategic planning meeting actually divvied up and everybody, every board has a town councilor liaison. And so Ann Santos is our liaison, which makes sense because she was once on the board of health. Elaine and I served with her. Um, so she just texted me and she's at the housing um, meeting that Julie Smith Galvin was just off to. And she, A, um, is congratulating us for being a full board and is welcoming Elaine back and is thanking us for giving her family three jabs at uh, the flu clinic on Saturday. So your T town council liaison. <laughs> Okay. Um, should we get into the 2015A? Yeah. Laurel, have you been outreached by yeah. anybody? So, so I think we all got letter. I, I believe we all got two letters. One from, from the, um, the Greater Boston Physicians for Social Responsibility letter, and then the other from the PBD Board of Health. And from what I can tell from the ask is that they're asking us to write a similar letter to the governor. It occurs to me that we should be writing it, sending copies to the reps and we should sort of look at their model. And maybe Anthony, you can help us with this because it looks like the director wrote it and one of the members signed it. 
not all of the members. Um, my thought when I got it and saw that it was on tonight's agenda was to call somebody from Wakefield Gas and Light because I had a feeling they might know more about it than I did. And so I checked with Jen Calais. Anthony, I sent her, I sent you her testimony. Did you send it to Candace and Elaine by any chance? I, I didn't get around to it, no. Okay. Um, since we're talking about it, I think it's okay for me to forward that to you. I just didn't, I don't like to do that under open meeting law, so I get a little nervous. Um, so at any rate, um, Jen is one of our commissioners and she did not, uh, the, the Wakefield Light and Gas um, never took this up as a recommendation one way or the other, but Jen had very strong feelings about it and she testified that it, it's not, you know, that it doesn't seem like a relevant plan um, really because of the, you know, just as um, Julie Smith Galvin said, you know, it, it, it's a, it's a peaker plant. So as it goes up, um, it, it takes an awful lot of energy to get back online. Um, and, you know, what, what struck my interest in those letters was that these are, um, you know, we, we talk about uh, social determinants of health and here we have these peaker plants, you know, right in the middle of a, of a place where the population is fairly vulnerable. Um, so I think it's it's kind of cool to, to take this from the public health and it just looks like the ask is for them to do a more robust health study. It just doesn't sound like it. Um, right. And so I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking at this point that that there's really nothing controversial. You know, I just, I, I didn't want to embarrass the town. You know, I wanted to just do due diligence and check with people in town who knew about it. So that, you know, so it was great. We were able to get Julie in here to chat and, and Melissa. Um, and so my thought is that we certainly can write a letter. It's, you know, and, and it just, it just shows that we're advocating for each other for, for public health. And I think we always forget, especially in the year of COVID, is that DEP um, mandates are often managed either by health departments or DPWs or a combination of both. I think we forget that we have that DEP arm because um, we, don't, we don't usually exercise that. You know, I think it's more on a, on a big community basis. But those are my thoughts. I would sort of thinking that we need to be clear about what the purpose of this letter is. Is our purpose that we request a health impact study or are we standing against this um, altogether? It seems like their ask is that we advocate for a health impact study. Um, and that sounds like a great idea, of, like it should have already been done. Um, but then are we gonna go further and, and offer an opinion for or against this plant in general, or, or are we gonna just kind of stick with what the ask from them is, which is just that we recommend that they conduct a health impact study? Well, I think, um, and this is, you know, I, the way I read it, I, I kind of, I think I'm agreeing with Candace here. I think it's, um, I think they were asking us to sign a letter in support of having a comprehensive kind of health impact assessment. That's what it sounds like. Um, but you know, to go off of what Laurel said, I think we have a responsibility to really look at the research of other places that have, you know, to have these plants and to see what kind of impact they had in these in these other areas because they probably had to do these comprehensive, you know, health impact assessments as well. Um, I think we could, you know, I think it's actually a very responsible thing for us to do is to write a letter, you know, if we find that there is evidence and there probably is uh, evidence of this being detrimental to other areas then we should write a letter um, against uh, the, the plant, you know, as a whole, I think. And I believe, I read this is the third plant that they would like to put in this area. There are already two functioning plants yeah. in this, on this piece of land. Yeah. yeah. So we don't have to look too much further. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any thoughts, Elaine? I hadn't gotten the letter, but I do remember some um, talk about this, but I think it was at least a year or so ago. 
And I think that's what they more or less are trying to get local health departments, as Candace said, and you mentioned to write the letter of support to do the study. And I think they feel that the more health departments that do that, that when the study comes out, we would be able to stop something or to go ahead with it. That that's what it really does. And that and I think that's the way to go is really to support the study. Yeah. And we can't we can't preemptively kind of just write that letter saying we're against it because we need to give yeah. we need to give them a chance to produce this before we say, you know, look yeah. at the impact it's gonna have. So I right. think Elaine's right now. And it does seem like their ask at this point is yes. for a letter supporting the study. And and that mm -hmm. seems very reasonable. So if so, we were gonna do that, how would it be, who would initiate that? Anthony, would that be something you would kind of start? And if the board was in agreement, we would sign? If you guys, I think that's probably the process. I'll, I'll probably draft some sort of letter that's you know in agreement with you know this assessment that they need to produce. And then um, I would bring it to you, to you, the board, and then you guys would take a look and see. Yeah, my, my thought would be to pick up the phone and call the health director in Peabody mm -hmm. that their, their, their letter is dated July. So, you know, we're not going to have a letter signed by our board. Well, I mean, we can come in, you know, you draft it and, and, and we're in agreement or we can wait till November. I don't, you know, I don't know the timeline. I don't know what's pressing here, but I always kind of like just to pick up the phone and say, so what are you asking exactly? Like, do we rewrite that same letter and you know and cut and paste pieces of it and and stick it in a letter or is there something mm. that we can just refer to you know we the board of health of of wakefield um are in full support of the letter sent to you blah 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 you know from peabody uh board of health you know so I, i'm just it might be helpful for for you to give your peer a call to get some clarity on what it is that they're asking, but I would absolutely um, uh, endorse their effort to get more information. I think that's and a great idea. What mm. do we, if what do we, if anything, have to do about the other advocacy group? Um, to sort of, I mean, should we be communicating with them? Like, I'm getting emails, and I kind of feel like, like perhaps we've gotten two emails, right? Yeah, the response I think should maybe not come from us, but rather like we would direct them to Anthony. Like, does that we'll make go more to sense? Anthony. Yeah, rather I than getting it, responses yeah. from. I think it's the members. same thing. Do you remember a couple of years ago, Laurel? We yep. had somebody who was doing the energy thing, and yep. Ruth took care of it. It should go to the director, and then that way he can fill it. You know, look through it and take an idea, and then gather the information and then present it to us as a board. Yeah, that's probably yeah, the best. I agree. But I'm guessing other than, I, I don't know, I suppose, Anthony, if you wanted to communicate with this physicians group, you could, but really we should be working with the other board directly. Yeah. 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 I, I would just, I would say we'd probably just treat them as an advocacy group and, you know, how they would have, they'd be supporting this, you know, officially or unofficially, they'd be, they've already written a letter. But I think really what we have to do is work with the other boards. Uh, I think that's the only way for us to really get anything done. So mm -hmm. I right. will, I think, yeah, I think it's a great idea that I'll, I'll reach out to the, the director of health and Peabody and then we'll, we'll, we'll discuss it and let the, we'll, we'll try to figure out what they're looking for in the first place. Cause mm -hmm. I think our assumptions are correct, but let's not assume, I guess. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I always do. I just, I just, pick up. <laughs> what is it that will be most helpful to you because we're in, you know, I mean, yeah. I think it was really nice to realize that this has been on people's radar in Wakefield. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we had reasons to not have it on our ra radar. We were a little preoccupied, um, mm -hmm. but it's kind of nice to, to think globally about public health and the energy sector. Um, so let us I mean, know. You know, just, uh, just interestingly enough, we, um, this is sort of related, but we had a grant just pass us by just in terms of we weren't able to get it in in time because we, uh, we had such a short notice. And I think, I think Elaine sent this one to me. It was the air sensor, the air sensor grant. Do you remember? Oh that? yeah. Yep. So we just, we just didn't have time to put that together. Um, but I spoke to Martha, Martha Grover from Melrose. Um, mm -hmm. so she's our uh, environmental environmental person. Um, but really what was important was, um, we, there is a need to have those air quality sensors and we do have an environmental justice um, block that covers, I think the Lincoln Elementary in Melrose. And I think I think part of Wakefield is also included. I'm not sure exactly which part, but I think there's a, there's a 
piece of the environmental justice block that overlaps in there. So we do have a need, and I think um, it's, this is something we we can't you know we can't really let go. I think we should follow through with it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Anything else? Sorry, I went to the wake up meeting yesterday. Hmm. What did we talk about oh, um, Catherine presented her uh, the the youth um, the YRBS youth risk and behavior survey. Um, I don't know if you have had an op opportunity to see it, but uh, she's she presented it to school committee, and I think she might be. I don't know. She she takes it on the road every year. But essentially, um, Wakefield's no different. You know, there were some COVID-specific stress questions in there. There were some some targets that because we're we're now the whole thing now is um, being underwritten by Leahy, so they're doing the whole Middlesex. So we haven't always had communities in Middlesex to compare to, but now that we do, uh, we're we're showing a few spots that are you know look problematic. Um, but you know, the good news is we have an action plan and I was just, I, you'd, I can't wait for you to come to a meeting, Anthony, um, yeah. and anybody else who can come because you just, you know, so it is a room full of people who sort of, who think prevention, who have an eye towards substance use and mental health, um, and, you know, really a, a group of talented people who who are are, are working mm. forward and it's you know and I, i've been very impressed with our partnership with melrose mm -hmm. wakefield they they send some members there and again with our regional coalitions it's just it's amazing to think what we didn't have and that what we have now we used to have nothing you know 10 mm. years ago and 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 now we are really talking we're really with the kids so it's it's always pretty cool things that are, you know, it's just so neat to have a partnership with the schools and police. I mean, WAVE just had their run last week. And so mm -hmm. again, we have, you know, we are community public health in regards to who, you know, we're reaching out to some like-minded people. So I just wanted to, you know, hats off to us because I think we need to celebrate the good things. Um, there is, so flu clinic is tomorrow for Cataldo. Yep. So I said I would show up just to direct traffic, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, have we, we had written that we were gonna do a family clinic. Was that based on how much vaccine we still have or we still have to kind of wait and see how things play out in the next week or so? We do have to wait um, until we know how many how much vaccine we're going to have left, and we also just put in an order with the state uh, for PD doses. Okay. Um, so once we once we get a better sense, and I think we ordered 170 that ended up being mm -hmm. Melrose, and, and we maxed out at 40 for Wakefield, which isn't very much, but um, I think it's uh, it's something that we can give out. I guess if I don't think it'll come in time for tomorrow, obviously, but I think. Um, if we have another small pop-up clinic or something, you know, at some sort of event, we can have those there and ready and they'll be reimbursed and we'll be able to okay. them, so. And I can tell you, people came by the farmer's market tent and they were thrilled that we were there, um, wondered if we had COVID boosters in our back pocket for them. And that, you know, and again, <laughs> some, it's some public education. It's like, yeah, no, I mean, there's a reason why COVID boosters go with vans because you need refrigeration and and a little bit more care the the flu vaccines are a little bit more forgiving and they're okay in the cooler um but and again we had people who had volunteered for us last year for the covid clinics and they are still expressing mm -hmm. how wonderful that experience was so i would love at some point as i said to town council to kind of officially recognize this great oh yeah absolutely or, or give them a new name i don't know i kind of feel like we need to roll them into a new name you know friends of the effort or something but it was it was cool to see that mm -hmm. and i think as part of i think as part of what you're saying um moving forward you know in a, in a more normal year as they can be as normal as they can be um 
I think we should, you know, when we get back to being the main source of giving out flu shots and everything, um, we we may start, we'll probably start moving away from Cataldo a little bit because we can, we do have the capacity to do it. We have all these great volunteers. Um, I think that'll affect our ordering as well. It kind of circles back to the original part. So we're going to order more supplies, you know, in anticipation, looking at how many are served by Cataldo, that'll help us, you know, see how much we need to really serve all the needs if we are the ones providing all of it. I mean, we took a hit historically when vaccines became available at drugstores. Right. So that is much more um, what's affected our numbers. So, you know, yeah. you're the numbers guy. It'll be interesting to, you know, sit down and look at that. Yeah. Um, town meeting is November 6th. I don't think there's anything that has to do with us. Right? We didn't, we didn't put it. No, <laughs> so, we didn't. no, we didn't this I'm time. Just checking. We don't know. It's, <laughs> there is rumbling amongst the town councilors. They won't stop talking about it, that, you know, to make us a five member board. And just so you know, what I said to them when this came up, when I was, when I was nominating Elaine to fill her own position, which I think is the will of the voters as well. Um, I said, listen, it, it for now, as three, you know, please don't assume that we know everything um, or know something. I mean, it's hard, Anthony, especially, you know, you're between two towns. Um, town councilors often kind of get updates from Steve in the, in the beginning of the COVID emergency. We were more vested in making sure that the health director um, was just able to be efficient in what she needed to do and we didn't you know and, and we were meeting every week for a little while anyways <laughs> but other people were getting daily updates and so sometimes um the chain of of communication got a little squirrely um and so i just asked them to just you know be mindful that as three we're you know we are within uh, public meeting laws and that we'll figure certainly figure it out but we can certainly talk to each other and 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 if they have any issues to just reach out to any one of us so i don't you know i think um i don't think five is magical in getting work done it's just helpful to have subcommittees so that you can talk to each other or the chair could mm -hmm. could talk to other members um if you look around oh, Laurel and um, Anthony in the surrounding towns, yeah. three is the member and yep. it has always been that way for 20 yeah. something years. Um, I, I, I really don't know. We have to really discuss if we really would want to. It's something we'll have to look into. And Anthony, maybe you can find the data on something. But yeah. um, three has always been the number and it's locally everywhere is three. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's the information that town council I think needs to hear. Yeah. I just think that it's been such an extraordinary year. And, you know, usually when health departments are doing their job, no one's looking at them. And then this year we became movie stars. Um, important. And we, come, yeah, we became very important. So, so you know, I, I'm, I'm non-committal either way. I just wanted you to know that that's the, that's the drum that that's what we're, you know. It's been mentioned. They just keep talking about it in town council. And to be, maybe and to be it's honest. something. Yeah, maybe Anthony, it's something you can talk about with our local, our uh, coalition that we have. Yeah. You kind of want to keep the same as they have because it sometimes yeah. you don't want to overstep. You know, when it isn't broken, yeah. you don't fix it. <laughs> well, to be honest, whenever whenever it's come up, you know, formally or informally. Um, I've, I've always said that so far it's been very efficient. We've had, you know, we've had the three, obviously Elaine just came back, but I think the, the way it's been with the three, uh, three board members has made sense. Um, I told them that, you know, we could table this until spring, maybe we can think about it, but as for the way it is right now, I think it's, I think it's working well. So let's not, let's not change too much. All right, and then do we know if anyone reaches out to the candidates who applied to, um, just thank them for their interest. Does Sherry reach out to them? Or are we supposed to? I forget. I think, uh, I think it does. Yeah. I think you're I think you're muted, Cindy. I think you've said something, but yeah, I'm not sure. Um 
I can ask her tomorrow. Do I? Do you think I should be the one reaching out? Um, maybe. Sure. Well, maybe. It, it, it would either be you or the chair. Right. <laughs> Not the chair. <laughs> but just to say, you know, just to, to say thank you, I can tell you that one of um, the candidates came by the other day and I encouraged mm -hmm. her to stay involved and to listen to meetings and you know in two years you know maybe i'll be your campaign director i don't know um but it was just nice to to see someone she's somebody um who is not a nurse um and, and who who looks like she has some system work and she's mm -hmm. she's much younger <laughs> she's a lot younger than me then for sure you know, we want to grow our talent um, yeah so just as an aside so anyways i just i just you know i still have my 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 mother had like the emily post perfect etiquette book out at my wedding and my husband still married me but <laughs> i just like to, i like to cover the bases oh i'm happy to reach out to them if if you guys think that's what needs to happen it's fine i can do that um I'm sure all their information is in their resumes. Yeah, um, if, if you could, Candace, I think that would be, I think it would just be good form. I think yeah. it would be good encouragement. It was nice to know and see and hear that there were people who were interested. Um, you know, this past year with public health, I mean, um, either we've been good or we've been bad. And to know that people really took an interest and wanted to be part of it, I think was something, um, and we're out of like out of like you say what the medical field was, and it wasn't just nurses or doctors or anything like that. It was other people who saw mm -hmm. that there was a need to step up. I think that was really good, and maybe just thanking them for even taking the time to be interested would be nice to hear from us. Yeah. Anything else besides thanking them and and encouraging them to stay involved? Any other kind of general messaging to pass along? I would I would just encourage them to. Um... You know watch i mean now that people can look at our meetings and just say yeah. hey you know you know way, ways that you can know what we're doing is looking at the website looking at recorded meetings that are always available now um and you know just just you know giving them specific things to, to all, right. Look at. all right thank you candace mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I want to apologize again for not being there last week um, at the appointment. Um, oh, don't worry about that. I'm, I'm so glad that you're back with us, Elaine. <laughs> Thank you. I really want to take the time. I haven't had a chance. I've been busy catching up to um, a lot of things and I'm going to be doing the APHA meeting um, online, um, the big uh, conference out in uh, Denver. So it's, you know how I am. I'm not a techie person and trying to set up what, what I want to see has been bad, but to thank all of you for your support and it's great to be back. And I'm, I'm really glad that I'm going to be able to finish out my term and, um, you know, kind of fulfill my commitment you know my commitment had to go down because there was a commitment that had to be filled that was much greater than um the position was at the time and that's why I did step down at that time um to fulfill that and I'm glad I'm glad I did I'm really glad and I'm glad I we found Anthony because I don't know what we would have done Anthony if you hadn't sent in that oh my god he hadn't sent that resume that day I I just I just remember as I told him looking at it and go oh he's going to interview right he looks good yeah, 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 yeah. 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 so we're we're very grateful that you took the time and you stepped up to the plate to say hey listen they need help and I'm going to help them and I think we're very glad and I think I'm very fortunate to have served this many years and, and Laurel knows that she also feels like that, but I think we've always been glad and um, to have Candace come on board. We've had some awesome, awesome board. The last 10 years, this board has been um, tremendous, tremendous um, members and what we've done and what we've set as a presence. Yep. Well, I, I, no one doubts your commitment, Elaine. <laughs> <laughs> there is still, no doubt <laughs> i'm still doing things anthony's still calling me every day for something. Uh, did you want to do this did you want to do that and uh i laugh but um i have many friends in public health and i was speaking to one again today who has just been called out of retirement for the second time 
Mm. Um, and said to me, I said, what are you going for number three? This is for, yeah, what can I, you just can't, people who are in public health, and I think Anthony, you'll probably attest, and so on our board members, once you get into it, and, and you just hooked. can't leave it, you can't, yeah. you're hooked, you can't, you can't do it, you can't go anywhere, you just can't. But you're well, staying in the yeah, I want to say thank you, Elaine. You're you're, you know, you're a little bit you're a little bit crazy for stepping into this role for the circus <laughs> that was a you know a couple months, and you know um, we're we're glad to have you back on the board. Thank you. It was fun though, Anthony. It was like being back at my old job. It was like I never really retired. It was like, did I really retire? You know, but it was good. It was nice because it gave me an experience that I really got to work with both staff who are amazing. And I knew they were amazing from being on the board, but I got to learn so much more from them and a better understanding of what they did. And I think it's good because I'll be able to take it with me back here to the board and be able to um, do it. And thank you to Cindy. Cindy was very good. God love her. Her and Denise were very good to me. They put up with me. (laughs) (laughs) No, wait, how do you do hearts? like that <laughs> that's on the record now so I know. <laughs> oh madam uh, shall i make a motion to adjourn uh, if i could have one more oh, comment yeah i okay. appreciate it um and you sort of you sort of began this laurel so i guess i not to belabor the point but just communication um mm-hmm. uh, it wasn't ideal uh how that meeting last week got set up and i think that I don't know, perhaps um, town council leadership has just gotten out of the habit of messaging everybody when, when, you know, they're expected to be a certain way, or perhaps um, people are just expecting others to be more available since we're all on Zoom. And it's true, we are much more available now that we're all on Zoom. But um, I mean, in the future, of course, and I don't know, I, I guess, Anthony, I'm sure you know this, but if you happen to come across anybody in your travels, um, just reminding them that that more communication is always preferred to less um, and letting us know. I mean, we want to be there. All of us do. Um, And all of us do have other commitments outside of this board. So, you know, if if we have a little notice, I'm guessing that almost every single one of us can probably make it work. but it was just for such an important thing. It was unfortunate that we weren't made aware um, other than uh, an email that went out to the whole town uh, that they needed us to be at this important meeting. So that's all I want to say. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's been said and the point's been made, um, but yeah. And I'm glad, you know, um, Laurel has told us that um, town council liaison in Santos is going to be kind of the point person for us at least. And I, you know, I have faith that she'll be, you know, better in communication as well. I have to do my part. I have to reach out more. Um, sometimes I, you know, I am still trying to get into that, that, that system with Steve and everybody else, you know, to really get that communication, you know, clearly. But once, you know, once I'm getting it, I'm going to be sending it to everybody here. So whatever I hear um, will be sent yeah. out. So thank you. Yeah. Great. Appreciate yeah. that. I know I, I, I told, I think I told town council that I was going to wear a t-shirt that, you know, said you can't talk about us without us. <laughs> so Make that too. <laughs> like a new poster, but you know, they're all working incredibly hard and diligent on all sorts of things. And you know, maybe it's a blessing that they're that they like us. But, maybe. Yeah. Okay. If there's nothing else from anyone else, I'd be happy to take a motion to close. <laughs> you Elaine, you want to meeting? Elaine, <laughs> welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> you want me to really do that? <laughs> your motion making hat. Do you want so to we, make the, what day do you want the next meeting? Oh, you know, we are. oh you know, thank you. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, 17 November. Yep. That would be the third Wednesday. Yep. Good for everybody. That's okay with me. Yeah, that's okay with me. So I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting tonight on November 21st. No, today is. I mean, today's October. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is. I, I have to go to so many webinars this week. I, I, I don't even know. My calendar is my, my outlook can't even take another date to put into it. But I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I second. All in favor? Silver, aye. Gorville, aye. Linehan, aye. 